Yeah, baby, we're back. We are back, and this is <laughs> come uh, on. This is too exciting. I mean, this, this is, is ridiculous. Like we said, this is the fashion episode. <laughs> this is it. And <laughs> what did I wear? Nothing remotely fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me just start by saying that we've been doing this podcast for three years. Yes. Every time I say we're going to do it, even interviews, my wife generally rolls her eyes. Yes. Oh, I I, I, just the thought of anything soccer, or football you, related. Or you coming over me. back when we did it in our apartment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was just like, why is he here yeah. again? Ah, uh, the soccer never ends. <laughs> she actually said that to me. She's like, is there an off season ever? <laughs> she doesn't want it to continue. She doesn't understand why people kick balls. Now, that said, I mentioned who we were interviewing today. And I mean, pillows were thrown. <laughs> OMGs were yelled. <laughs> Hands to chest, <laughs> Ooh. mouth agape. I mean, this was. There, I, I see so many gifs already <laughs> from your wife. It's just <laughs> she was. She yelled, "What? Why? Why you? That's not fair. You don't deserve this." Yeah. Can I be there? Can I interview him? <laughs> I mean, you are royalty to my wife. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if she you don't know up someone else. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what we're talking about, I mean, fashion icon, New York icon, okay? Linda I, Hunt. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, also apparently huge fan of soccer. Ladies and gentlemen, unless you're driving, put your hands together for the one, the only, Simon Dune and everybody. Woo! Simon, hello. Hello. Uh, uh, thank you for being here. I mean, th there's a, th th there's few... And few and far between the times that we are like legitimately starstruck, and uh, the just I mean, we're starstruck by the shirt that you're wearing, first yeah, of all. Let's That's start <laughs> there <laughs> because it is uh, it's colorful, it's beautiful. But thank you so much for being here. But let's let's be honest, you as a Dominican man, you're jealous right now, right? I mean, this, this is, is I, I mean, you, you stole my dad's yeah. outfit. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is the throwing out the garbage <laughs> outfit for a Dominican going to a nightclub. You look like a neon sign if you're Dominican, <laughs> but this is awesome. But you're kind of known for, for wearing uh, shirts of this ilk. Um, yeah, I'm an exhibitionist. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And uh, this man blouse, do you want to know who designed it? Please let us know. Hang on to your girdles. Okay. I'm never going to believe who designed my man blouse. Is it you? Liam Gallagher. That is... Okay, so that's amazing. And also, I've never heard it. his last name pronounced, pronounced that, that way. way. <laughs> is it supposed to be Gallagher? Gallagher. Gallagher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Liam Gallagher of Oasis. Hello, Design. Man City fan. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, Wonderwall. He, he has we, a, <laughs> totally. He has a clothing line called Pretty Green. Okay. Not sure what that means, but that's the name of it. Has and, to be marijuana reference. Yeah, <laughs> when you go to live. London next time on Carnaby Street, there's a store there. I walked in and I thought, that man blouse has my name all over it. Okay, Simon Dunish buys retail, everybody. Yeah, you know. And go to that store and use promo code COOLIGANS <laughs> for 20%. Oh, that's not going to happen. Do they Man. make these in American sizes? You might have to have some gussets put into yours. <laughs> Add some bands, some stretch bands. Yeah, that's, that's okay. <laughs> Liam would approve. I've never been I've never been more offended by the term gussets being thrown. <laughs> I've never heard the word, and now I'm, I'm yeah. going to use it. It's going to be in my vocabulary for the rest of this, the existence of this show. Uh, so this is going to be... He is going to make fun of me. Pretty with the exciting, term, uh, but well. but Simon, you let, let's talk about the book uh, first because uh, you you are a fan. You're a footballing fan, but I, I read your book and and it's a focus on the style of, uh, of of the soccer world. And we've always noticed it. I mean, there's always like the. I mean, when I think of soccer style, the first person that comes to mind right now, I guess, of my generation is like Hector Bellerin, right? You you you. you hear him you see him anywhere i'm like he's going to he's going to stand out yeah. uh, but this book basically covers like how how Hector Bellerin came into existence, right? How he's allowed to be who he is <laughs> because a lot of people have paved the way for for a guy like him. Well, there's a great picture in my book of Hector Bellerin when he had his cornrows. Yes. Yeah, the cornrows. See, that's the thing that's so fabulous Beckham about mask. soccer players. Their lives are very controlled. Like, wear your uniform, wear your flannels, don't do this, come in here, sit on the bus, be quiet, go to training. But they find ways to be expressive and explosive through, ta through ink and through their haircuts. And yeah. then, of course, what they wear when they're not wearing their uniform. Of course. But, like, they're, they have this desire to stand out on the pitch. So the hairdos. Oh, sure. Hector. Yeah. Um, the, it, it's such a fascinating culture, and I love that. Like, you're young, you're making $600,000 a week. Why wouldn't you cornrow your hair? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Who's going to tell you no? Everyone on staff is paid by you. Yeah. You know, like if Christian was a, was, a, was a famous baseball player and I was just posse and getting paid to be there, he could walk out, 
in half braided, half blonde wig, and I'd be like, "Buddy, you look amazing." If there was even a slight <laughs> criticism, I'd be, I would, I think I would attack him. <laughs> yeah, I would have dogs set up to bite people that offended me or said anything I did was wrong so, if I was rich. So Simon, uh, so how did this? Uh, I know you grew up in in Reading, right uh, in, in in England, which is the Queen's team, am I right? Reading. Is it? I well, when so. I was a kid, it was called we, it was called the Biscuits. We used to shout up the Biscuits because there was a biscuit factory, from yeah. Huntley and Palmer's, right there. Very English. So they English. were called the Biscuits, right. and good. then the biscuit <laughs> factory closed. Like, like Everton's uh, uh, the Toffees yeah. and whatever. Yeah, yeah. you know it's funny. American teams. the teams, Royals. American teams are like they're named like in fear or like you know like tigers and lions. <laughs> Biscuits and toffees. Toffees. Yeah, yeah. Baggies. Yeah. By the way, I if I would have known that, I probably would have grown up a Biscuits fan. You know what I mean? Much more than cannons. I mean, let's be honest. Um, there were some very noteworthy biscuits over the years. There was a guy called Robin Friday who was wild. You know, he had really long hair, Cuban heels, um, snakeskin boots. Um, you know, when he got married, Southern Television filmed the wedding. He was smoking a joint. He was very like that white... He dressed like Eric Clapton or yeah. Jeff Beck. You know, like that's how the rock and rollers were dressing. And he thought, I want that. And he, he was fabulous. Robin Friday, not with us anymore. Okay. Do well, you think it helps a soccer player's career to be that sort of notable? Like Hector Bellerin, a lot of the fans have sort of reacted negatively towards his, his ability to express himself online and during the games with his haircuts, with his fashion that he does after and before the games. Do you think it helps or hurts? Um, I think you're taking a risk. You know, one does see that today the most flamboyant, gorgeous players like Danny Alves, Neymar, they've established themselves. Like Danny Alves is such an accomplished player, Neymar, ditto. They can wear whatever they want. They don't care. You know, if you're on your way up, though, and you start going on Gangnam style, <laughs> yeah. it, it, people will pick on it. They'll pick up on it. Those, you know, the managers are often quoted like, oh, if he wasn't spending so much time fiddling with his hair, maybe he'd be scoring more. See, managers don't really like it. They think, oh... You're weird, you're freaky, you're going to infect the team with alternative ideas. Yeah. They, they, they're trying to stop unconventional impulses. Well, right. has that changed at all? Because it sounds like, I mean, it just sounds like homophobia, right? It's just like, oh, these guys are dressing a little too, in yeah. a way that makes me a little uncomfortable. Hey, well, well, only black, grays, and blues. Yeah. <laughs> but a it, little bit, maybe. It, it feels like that's, it, it, uh, that seems... Or it's just a masculinity thing. Yeah, well, it yeah, seems yeah. outdated yeah. to even think that way anymore because of how successful the Beckhams, the Ronaldos, and the Neymars have been. It seems like you, you almost have a leg up if you can distract them with, with your frosted tips, you yeah. know? That's probably true of now. Yeah. You know, I think now we've reached a point post Beckham with Ronaldo, all these guys who are real peacocks. Right. Um, it's become part of the picture, part of why the fans tune in, go to the game. So, I, yeah, you're right. I always think of, like, Frank Worthington. You know, Alf Ramsey said, oh, I want you to be part of the England team. He showed up at the airport in a cowboy hat and a Dennis Hopper jacket with fringes, <laughs> looking like he was ready for Wick Woodstock. Yeah. And Alf Ramsey just yelled, what the fuck have I done? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm ruining this entire squad. Yeah. <laughs> the country is going to be ashamed. And the players, too, they were very anti-hippie in the 60s. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was seen as something sinister. Um, you know, so that, it took a while. But now I think it's a lot more groovy. I mean, they have beards now. Yeah. That was a huge step. That well, was a big one. It's also like in England, if you think back, it was very, I mean, it's not as much anymore, but it used to be a very blue collar. So there was a very, this, look, we have bounds and if we're going to be blue collar, all right? <laughs> you dress like you're going to work and you punch in, punch out. Don't you get too groovy? But it's those players that we remember. Is there anyone in particular that you think did it right? Because I look back and I look at Beckham and I remember Beckham was one of the first players that everyone knew, even if they didn't like soccer, they would talk to me about him. But then I saw a picture, and you have it in your book, of him wearing open toe shoes, and I was like, all right, I'm done with this guy. I don't want to see anyone's toes. I don't want to see anyone's toes. It's gone too far. <laughs> well, the extraordinary thing about David Beckham is that, um, you know, up to that point, footballers, you know, they would sell crisps or aftershave or car tires or something like that. Suddenly, with David Beckham, he actually became a fashion icon. Mm -hmm. You know, he was an icon of cool. Up to that point, footballers were seen as kind of crazy consumers, maybe, of fashion. Right. But not actually somebody that you would copy 
and right. and David Beckham was on the cover of the Face magazine, and everything changed. He became an icon for cool, and people started going to games that didn't go to game of football. Went from being sort of oiky yeah, to yeah. being this this cool thing, and you know. He um he's extraordinary the influence he's had. Sure, and and he still looks great, and he still has the same exact amount of influence. But yeah. I, I I did want to ask you 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 uh, uh write a, about him a bunch about but George Best right. So I'm I think I'm too young to have I, you know I didn't experience George Best at, at the peak of his uh, popularity. But uh, I know ESPN did a thirty for thirty uh, about him, and I've uh, I've seen a bunch of uh, watched his videos on YouTube, and he I mean he's a British British Messi before Irish. Messi. Irish, look yeah, at that. Yeah, he's Irish. That's right. Okay, yeah. so but and he, he also played in uh, for San Jose, right? He's played, he played no, San... I believe the Aztecs, Los Angeles Aztecs. Did he? Los yeah, Angeles. he was yeah. in L.A. Yeah. Yeah. San Diego, okay, San Diego. Okay. Yeah. And he, um, if you go to Belfast now, the airport's called George Best Airport. Okay, and like he was a huge cultural figure. They called him the Fifth Beetle. Because he, he, you he know, got the haircut, yeah. And I think it was a, it was about timing again, because the wage cap was lifted in like 1962. So before that, the players were making like 12 pounds a week max. So they didn't have any money. Yeah. The wage cap was lifted. The swinging 60s happened. The Beatles happened. And there's George Best, so good looking, black glossy hair. Well, for the for the for 60s standards, right? Let's yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Not to um, be too harsh, you know. Uh, he has oh. my favorite quote of all time: "Is saying he spent ninety percent of his money on fast cars and faster women, and the other ten percent he blew, he threw away." Yeah, yeah. I mean that's just very I mean, quotable. Yeah. The gift of the gap. Yeah, like the little Slatan Ibrahimovic, like for now, like he's probably like a modern George Best in that sort of tone. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he, he definitely had like a the, the uh, a sort of confidence that maybe that didn't really exist in uh, amongst footballers at the time. Well, also he was the first person to open a boutique, okay. and suddenly football players decided they should each have their boutique, Ooh. and the word boutique yeah. <laughs> began to sort of vibrate with possibilities. And him and Mike Summerby opened a shop together. He was a Man City player, um, and. Uh, Malcolm McDonald opened a boutique. Kenny Dalglish. It was such a thing. For Kenny po- Dalglish opened a boutique. Had a boutique. With, <laughs> la- wide lapels, flares. Um, <laughs> Do you remember I, Kenny Dalglish? Bobby he, Moore. He was very recently just a Liverpool manager. He was like a, he's like one of the old classic guys that came back for a short stint to try to save the end of a season. This, I mean, if look him up real quick because if you see sand, this dude's photo, uh, Rangers, <laughs> right? Or yeah. Celtic. He is just not one of those guys you would ever expect. It's Kenny Dalglish. Okay. All right. The funniest thing is, though, it was such a big <laughs> thing, the idea of footballers opening boutiques, that Monty Python had a sketch where John Cleese played a footballer and Eric Idle played um, the interviewer. And Eric Idle was, you know, being very pretentious and said, don't you think there was a certain presumptuousness about the attack in the midfield and talk, like <laughs> being a presumptuous? And Cleese just sits there like this, and his name's Buzzard. And all of a sudden, he says, I'm opening a boutique. <laughs> and then he asks him more questions, and every time it's like, I'm opening a boutique. I tell that story just to illustrate what a thing it was. Bobby Moore had a boutique. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine I these know. guys having Believe boutiques. Believe me, they opened and closed pretty quickly. <laughs> Kenny Daglish having a boutique is like uh, Bill Belichick having a boutique. You know I mean? I've got to, a picture of him standing know, outside but, it. But to now, the, the, the Kenny Daglish I know is just an old white guy in well, a suit. It was know? an interesting development because up to that point, you know, the FA was about no money. You're not allowed to make money. Football is not about money. It's a people's game. It was very anti-money. So um, footballers in their spare time, they did things like raising poodles. You know, I have some old football annuals. Like, my hobbies are growing chrysanthemums. And now you look at it and you think, now they'd be out shilling their brains out, trying <laughs> yeah. to make some dough. Yeah. And it was back then, it, it was enshrined in the culture of football. We're not here to make money. This is a people's game. Blah, blah, blah. So it took them a long time to get to the point where they were just, you know, flogging everything to, to make yeah. some dough. So when you get depressed and you think, oh, the game's become so much about dough. It was quite recently that they were like, uh, one player, in, I point out, was a rabbit fancier. 
And that's not a euphemism. <laughs> yeah, I was he just was to actually <laughs> yeah. ra- play, you know, raising rabbits. So it was quite in those old football annual, annuals, they tell their hobbies and stuff like that. Then, of course, it all changed. I think a big moment was when Paul Gascoigne, you know, he cried at the World Cup and became a national folk hero. So he got a huge aftershave commission, a okay. licensing deal to do brute aftershave. And, you know, they said, Paul, we need you at the press conference. Just show up without any black eyes or missing teeth and you'll be fine. <laughs> so he shows and he probably up. probably couldn't. And they <laughs> said, so, Paul, how long have you been wearing aftershave? And he said, oh, I don't wear that stuff. It gives you a rash. <laughs> and they cancelled the contract. Paul, he was a bit of a... <laughs> there was another oh, time I love legend, him. though. He was very stylish. Yeah. He's one of my Bleach style icons. Oh, my God. And in his book... Gaza, my story, highly recommended. Um, he says, I went out and bought 10 Versace suits in fluorescent colors and um, bleached my hair. I'm not quite sure why. It seemed like a good idea at the time. You know, he's <laughs> full of quotes like that. This impulsive desire to adorn yourself and dress up and have fun. And I find that very life affirming. Yeah, there was, I, there was yeah. another player, uh, I forgot his name, that you pointed out who, who had a, a, like a, a hair. Uh, endorsement for some hair product and he was so frustrated after a loss that he cut his hair and lost the sponsorship immediately right after. He was just that angry over, over the loss that he just got, he buzzed his head. His head. To so, Lundgren. Uh, okay, that's right, yeah. Lundgren, yeah, yeah. Arsenal, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, you know, famous for the red mohawk too. He had the red, the dyed red hair. He, I think he's responsible along with Beckham for popularizing tattoos. He was the first person. Yeah. But his gave him a problem in his lymph gland and it had to be removed. Oh, boy. The tattoo or the lymph gland? <laughs> <laughs> Probably both. They didn't which, remove which, the lymph gland, just the tattoo. <laughs> which one do you want to keep? Which one's more important to you? <laughs> uh, so uh, I did want to ask, I, I'm curious about your thoughts of uh, comparing the, the, the history of, of soccer style to, to now, uh, you know, and, and if there's any... Um, you know, I don't know, if it's, is it too glamorous now? I mean, I feel like back then there were more, uh, there was a, 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 a sort of classic British, almost like um, the movie Kingsman, right? In the movie Kingsman, they're very, everything's about properness and everything right. like that. Uh, is, it, is it a little too, because I know you, you classify a couple styles, right? Like the ninja, the assassin and all this stuff. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe, I, don't, I think I'm going for assassin at the moment, yeah. right? Yeah. So The shiny assassin. <laughs> you and I are psychedelic ninjas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I consider myself pretty, I like to use a lot of colors because as a big guy, it's like, why not? Yeah. Are you a fan of the former or the current? What do you think? I have always loved it when people dress up. I, I really don't care. I love sports people that dress up. Conor McGregor, Russell Westbrook, um, Mayweather, you know, anyone who's going for it and dressing up. Life's short. Okay. You yeah. know, get that Gucci on, get out and <laughs> dress up. Carry, you know, it's when people are sort of inhibited that, you know, I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah. You know, have fun with it. Because it's, 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 if you're 19 years old, you're making all this dough, why not? The one area where I do think it's a little interesting is cars. Because in the old days, a player like George Best or Frank Worthington, who I mentioned, they were just starting to be able to buy a Lotus or a Ford Capri or something like that. Right. So they would, those cars were like banged up, bloodstains on the seat, scotch tape holding the window <laughs> closed. They used those cars. They wore them like a, a, an old leather jacket. Yeah, yeah. And now... Car, uh, these players with their supercar collections, they seem a little prissy with the cars. <laughs> like, I have a great picture of Frank Worthington with his Lotus and his girlfriend's like sitting on the front with her heel, digging into the hood. And now you can't imagine Cristiano Ronaldo letting his, <laughs> letting the current girlfriend sprawl on the car. So they're a little um, anal retentive about their cars now. And there's this yeah. thing called. Um, perfection anxiety. Okay. That super rich people tend to worry. Do I have the latest model? Is somebody going to key it, scratch it, and like trading up all the time? Back in the old days, this is where I do get nostalgic. I love the idea of a banged up old E-type with a rusty muffler that you're living in it. You've shagged in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's blood. It's got you character. Know, you punch somebody yeah. in it. Yeah. It's got character. It's like a, not that jacket. That you what like. is it? I mean, the description of the cars is just like the, the you know, Division One 
uh, you know, English yeah, football. It's the football it, league it, version it, of a the car. Football, it's, their, it's their bodies themselves. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they, they were they were quite banged up uh, and, and teeth were missing from time That's to time. That's a very good point. And now that they treat their bodies like um, supercars. Right. So yeah, yeah. Good, well observed. I also like, yes, there you go, look you. at that. Oh, he's got some <laughs> ideas, this guy. I also like the idea of just Cristiano Ronaldo watching his girlfriend start to put her foot on the hood of the car <laughs> yeah, as like he reaches crosses. over and just hits the button and like a deli, the number goes to the next and another girlfriend comes in. We're now serving number 748. Sorry, girlfriend, you're out. What would you like? <laughs> That's well, not going to happen. And there is a, a, a big section on, on wags themselves. You 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 give them uh, some, some love and attention. Uh, what is... It's weird. I feel like um, outside of the, the very popular, you know, uh, uh, Victoria Beckhams and, and like... <gasps> Yeah. You can't call her a wag. She's not a wag. Oh no! Uh, uh, why? Is well, she... she's too accomplished. She was oh. in the most popular girl group in history. I didn't know she got nice. And then okay. she's, <laughs> she's an OBE, and then she's uh, now got a preeminent, I've committed on this preeminent show so fashion line. <laughs> but was she so, not? She's the queen of the wag. She is. What? Well, it's a paradox because you can't earn. see. What's happened is now, um, you know. 2006 German World Cup. Right. The wags were there, and they, and it caused a sensation. You remember that mm -hmm. headline with them all walking down the street, yeah, and the yeah. headline was "Reservoir Wags." <laughs> yes. And um, it was very playful and very fun. You're just looking at these girls, thinking they're young, their husbands have plenty of dough, they're they're just quaffing champagne and sitting by the pool. The hotel took down the screen so the paparazzi couldn't shoot them. They put the hotel actually erected a screen sorry screwed yeah. that one up the hotel put up a screen so they'd have privacy and the girls took it all down you know and this is abby clancy and cheryl cole cheryl tweedy yeah. and victoria and carlene rooney and blah 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 so to me it was a glorious it's almost pre-social media time where they were yeah, really yeah. having fun and doing what young people are supposed to. They're not supposed to be role models every morning. <laughs> right now, just be having not. fun. So I kind of loved it. Now we're living in a different period, and and those same girls are, you know, they've they've they're older. They've had kids. They're very accomplished. Like Victoria is extraordinary. Colleen Rooney, she's like got her own business going, as well as having four kids. It's their major. Okay. Hats okay. Off. How dare however, you? Not? However, <laughs> I told him not to, Simon. I said, I why do have a tip. Okay, go for it. If you want a really good laugh, there's a book called I Am the Secret Wag. And have you, do you know in The Guardian, they used to have that column, I Am the Secret Footballer? Yes. And there were books. Well, this enterprising wag, she wrote this book called I Am the Secret Rat Wag. It is so amusing. I cannot begin to tell it's you. It's like an anonymous it's, look. I am the secret wag. It's really funny. But there's also a great tale in there of um, a wag from my hometown called Vivian Neat. And this is from the 1960s and 70s. Her husband was a player. I can't remember his name, Mr. Neat. And he, <laughs> she, uh, she, he was, then he became a groundsman. And then Vivian Neat, she um, took it upon herself to wash the team kit every week. 20 outfits yes. and dry it in her backyard for 20 years <laughs> and at one point they they got more players and she had to extend the washing line into the neighbor's house like to me that is that's a role model yeah, yeah. washing the team's kit oh. she's so major so having let's to remember, smell the team kit <laughs> let's remember vivian neat of, okay of reading yeah, I, I like that because there's a there's a real like storied history with uh, with WAGs, right? I mean, like, with American footballers, just, uh, like, American sports, I guess it's... It maybe it depends on the sport, but American footballers, like, soccer players here, we barely know... We they, don't know they, anything they, about they, them. We, they barely talk about them as human beings. Uh, so, uh, but I did want to do something because we do... Uh, talk about uh, we kind of focus on American soccer and American football on this show, and there are a lot of fashionable players that play in Major League Soccer. And you do talk about uh, you talk a little bit about Major League Soccer, but it's a predominantly about uh, so European football. Uh, so I did want to just show you. I have a couple photos of, uh, and we can do. I mean, you uh, you were on America's ne Next Top Model, right? You can give <laughs> a couple a couple uh, uh, maybe suggestions or just uh, or critique uh, of of some of the players. And I think I think it'll be a, a good start to to show uh, this side uh, to Ameri the American. Uh, How to up their game? Yeah, exactly. To the American footballer. So uh, all right, so let's go. Let me, let's get this going. Uh, uh, Play for me. Here we go. 
So I call it, it's the MLS. ML Yaz, bitch. <laughs> ML Yaz. That's right, MLS fashion, but I call yes. it ML, ML Yaz, bitch. Okay, so we, we're having, having a good time. We're having fun with having it. Having a good okay. time already. So, ML right. Yaz. So Simon Doonan. Uh, so these are a couple players from FC Dallas. And, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know where we can... I don't know how much critique or whatever. We could just... I have to say, what are we I'm, thinking first? Yeah, yeah. I'm first totally thing. impressed. They look just like um, European players. They could, you could be photographing players in Manchester. I mean, okay. they look well, that's really not groovy. true. If you could see the suns out in this photo, so that can't possibly. <laughs> So, yeah, um, a, clearly a photoshopped photo of Manchester. Well, I think now it's such a global culture. They can look online. They say, oh, yeah, yeah I can yeah, wear yeah. that. You know, that's part of soccer culture. I'm actually very gratified to see that. I see a Louis Vuitton handbag. There's it's just handbags. There's just plenty of that. some handbags. This yeah. Is another FC Dallas player. This is, uh, I believe, Rito Ziegler. Uh, uh, wow. So, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that taller person let him borrow his shirt. I mean, that is <laughs> very just a uh, good look, chiseled face, great a uh, great uh, sunglasses glasses. are dope. Sunglasses, sunglasses are dope. Looking really good. Where's there. he going? Like it, <laughs> he's he going, looks like he's, he's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to go really? look in the mirror. That's what I would do if I looked like that. Uh, um yeah, and the little man purse. I I toiletry mean toiletry bag seems to be the accessory to to, to show off a little bit. Once you get out of the car, and these are MLS players, so get out of the Uber. I don't see you with a little clutch bag. I couldn't do it. You know, <laughs> no. I have one with a handle. I yeah, mean, if my and dreams, it's long. if my Messenger, dreams came, if, I, I, backpack. Then you see the boobs. If my dreams came true, that. he would have that stuff. I mean, it would be great. Just to, my wife has tried. She's tried multiple <laughs> times to get me a little toiletry bag. Can't do it. Next up, this is Chris Winger. Uh, he's a player. He played for New York City FC. He played for uh, Real Salt Lake. I think he won an MLS Cup with Real Salt Lake. Long Island originally, but he looks like he's originally from Eng from Ireland. <laughs> Um, he looks very groovy. Okay. I mean, would I be happier if he was head to toe Gucci with, um, you know, charm bracelets and a big man purse? Yes. <laughs> you want he looks <laughs> treat yourself, MLS. Yeah. And Listen like, to Simon big, doing in a big ink. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you, no, you like he, the, the neck fat tattoos? You like all that? Oh, I just want people to just go nuts. Go, go for yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but you he, want Takashi six nine to play yeah. for MLS? <laughs> All right, next up, this is Bradley Wright Phillips. Dude. Englishman. Englishman. The son of Ian Wright, if you remember from Arsenal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He right. plays for the New York How Red incredible. Bulls. incredible. I didn't know York, that. Yeah. yeah. So he... Uh, he's number 99. 99. He goes by two nines. Uh, and uh, and this is this is a look out. Uh, he's clearly in New York. Uh, and yeah, he was be posing at just he's in the middle of the street. It looks cool. good. cool. Yeah. Super cool. Is it cool? Love it. Yeah, and he's a he's, he's two nines. Is that what you call him? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so he also he's also a rapper. He he does a you know grime. Do you know grime? The English there? rap. The English rap. Like storms. Yeah, like, it's like storms. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, gonna yes, say yes. yeah. He's a he's a, he's a little bit of a grime artist. Um, does he have an English accent? He yes, very he does. Much it's funny so. when they rap in yeah. South London accent. That's exactly what he has. He has mm. like a Tottenham accent. Actually, he's more like North London. Yeah. Next up, this is okay. This is Aurelian Collin, who plays for, also plays for the New York Red Bulls and is also a fashion designer. Fashion designer, AC Seven. Holy! So we're talking crap. about he's more than just boutiques. This guy's designing his own uh, clothing. He's edgy. He's futuristic. He's French. He's, also. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, look how fast I was like, oh, this explains it. Yeah. Um, and this is how French the, butchers dress. Like this is normal <laughs> for the French. I people. like the. You could actually do this look a very droopy goth. Yeah. Like Rick Owens. I can't. You can. I, it's why, a height thing. It's a height, it's a height thing. thing. Okay. I can't either because it would it would it's it a, would it would <laughs> I would look it's like a round, it's a round <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is also really in common with uh Kai Kamara, uh who is from Sierra Leone and currently plays for the Vancouver Whitecaps. Well you know what RuPaul said? If you want to make more money, wear a suit. Okay. Doesn't matter what your profession. That's great I advice. I tell Alexis it's just all the time. A bit hot. Though, I'm gonna start wearing it? a suit up here. I like a man blouse, but yeah. I'll throw on a jacket occasionally. You can they throw a jacket great. on this. They both look good. Yeah, that's. I think that is the logo for his uh, for his clothing line. That's the clothing. There. So this was the, I guess the the debut. Or the I'm logo. gonna have to do another book, like <laughs> about because I have some Galaxy players in there, but it's sort of a little token, my inclusion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm starting to feel that. Like you missed right. that a little. Hello. Yeah. I, I mean, have no idea all this was going <laughs> on. Uh, next up, this is. Maxi Uruti. Uruti, this guy is the moment we said on Twitter we were going to have a conversation about fashion. Everyone started tweeting us about this gentleman. He's Argentinian, and apparently he does exactly what you want. He's got the <laughs> tattoos. 
He's got the Louis Vuitton. He's got this. I mean, this is like, it feels and like he took this from your closet. what's the hand grenade? Like, what's that? For? Oh, that's uh, the Argentinians drink mate all day. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. That's the, uh, that's I love the it. Gourd. They uh, categorize as a hand grenade. That's a pretty cool. What's the stadium <laughs> called? The Bombonera? La Bombonera. That's yeah. where Boca Rivers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Boca it, Juniors. And wow, he sorry. plays for? F- F- FC Dallas. Wow. I mean, this is exactly this is what you education. asked for. <laughs> We're trying. Is this not what you asked for? This yeah. is also Maxi. Now he's doing he's doing the double Louis Vuitton. Same right player. There. He's doing man bun too. Yeah, like, which I, well, I did want to talk to you about. Yeah. because and, and what are your thoughts on this? Because there's not too many people that can pull it off. But it seems like the people who do rock it are, are incredibly successful people. Yeah. Well, I think anyone should have a go if they feel like it's free country. But here's the problem. <laughs> First of all, it takes two years to grow enough hair. So you have that intermediate period where you look like a Victorian washerwoman. (laughs) (laughs) Then, once you've got enough hair to start dragging it back into a man bun, two words to strike fear into any man's heart. (laughs) Traction alopecia. Okay. Yeah, if you keep yanking your hair back, you know, you... Yeah, yes. you're gonna you know what I'm talking start about? weakening the joints. Traction alopecia. <laughs> I'd never heard of traction alopecia, but I can tell you, cold sweat is what I heard. <laughs> I will say one thing. I know I'm not a fashionista, right? But as someone from the East Coast, you can't do white Tims, okay? <laughs> white Tims are for the girl who has three boyfriends and all of them play in the NBA, okay? You cannot, and they don't know about each other. You cannot so, do white Tims. Come on, man. Yeah, right. You yeah. gotta go wheats. Are you genderizing him? <laughs> What's the wow. word? <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. As a cis male, I am so sorry. <laughs> I apologize to everyone. He looks like a sort of troubled poet. Like he, he does. He looks great. What a great what I a love great. his look. See, my thing is you just look like different. Look like yourself. Look like something. Un- like he's got a lot of personality in his look. He stands out. He's yeah. really thinking about something. He's pondering right yeah, there. He's upset about the lyrics he just wrote for a singer-songwriter. <laughs> this is Zach Stephan. He's the goalkeeper for the Columbus crew. Let's start with the socks. The socks were the first thing that jumped out. What are we thinking here? Well, I think, see, that's a good example. Footballers have this innate flamboyance that comes out. You can tell them to wear your flannels, wear your gray suit, shut up, sit still, and then bingo, colored socks yeah. or ink like <laughs> hair. You know, so I love that, that they, they look for ways to sort of upstage their the regulations right. that they're surrounded with. Sure. Two backpacks but is a mistake, young. though, right? You can't go two backpacks, and they're kind of pedestrian-looking backpacks. Oh, it depends what's in them. You gotta right? go like you gotta <laughs> go He's duffel. bringing snacks for the other lads, <laughs> and, right? I like that you put snacks in there. As a big guy, you're kind of happy. This is also and this is Kai Kamara again with uh, a former player uh, who currently works for MLS. This is Kalen Carr. Uh, but I did I I picked this photo because uh, uh, Kai Kamara is from Sierra Leone. I felt like there was a very African kind of style in the, in the undershirt. Yeah, a little caftan detail. Okay. Um, no, it looks great. He looks fantastic. I'm going to walk into oncoming traffic. <laughs> Why don't I have yeah. these people in my book? <laughs> they're, they're pretty good, right? We've got yeah, some. so great. Just a couple more. Uh, this is David Villa, who is not... Oh, he, hello. Yes, uh, you know, he, he, European, but, you know, currently playing in MLS. He's in New York. He's he, in this picture with his wife. Very furry, yeah. furry neckline. He took part of her coat and put it on his. <laughs> Isn't that nice? But we love David Villa. But uh, yeah, w- any thoughts on this? Uh, on this you know one? what I like about it? It's that it's like it's all the same kind of color. It's like kind of monotone, but it's really flashy up top. Yeah, like he's gone for the donkey, grayish, beige, <laughs> yeah. sham beige. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of look. Um, a lot of my clothes are like that too. For stage, he, you want them to focus on your words. He's, he's being a gentleman because you know what they say in ballroom dancing: the man is the frame and the lady's the picture. Mm. So he's not upstaging the wife. He's letting her have a little moment. The minute she's gone, he's gonna. <laughs> yeah, that's that is absolutely lovely. Uh, all uh-huh. right. <laughs> so okay, just a couple. We have about three more. Uh, so this is uh, an NWSL player to Sarah Gordon. She plays uh, for the Chicago Red Stars. But I, I did want to ask about just even just your thoughts on, you know, we talk about uh, male footballers and their pressure to be, uh, you know, sort of uh, get sponsorships and, and look good. But I feel like there's a, a stronger pressure on the female players because there's less money to be made. So they have to do the endorsements. And she does do it. She's a great player. But but she's also like basically a model as well. And it's but that's, if you look at this, this is like athletic but still has sex appeal, right? I mean, that's midriff. She's got nails, but she's wearing Jordans, sweats. Um, she's a gorgeous girl. She's rocking the nails, which is a bit 
um, on the pitch, that could be a bit <laughs> of a problem. Issue, yeah. um, no, she looks fantastic. You know, my sister is like an ardent feminist, and she's like was saying to me, "Why haven't you included girls in your book?" And um, I had actually written a whole chapter on girls, but it felt like I was shoehorning in a token. Right. Yeah. That, that's a whole other book. Because look how fabulous. So a whole other book. Okay, an MLS book and a lady book. Yeah. NWSL book. I mean, and also this is just her Instagram photos. I mean, this isn't even her on a red carpet <laughs> or anything. So I, I what, did want to show. So this is Dom Dwyer, uh, who played currently plays for Orlando City and played for Derby County. He's an Englishman. Really. Yeah. And Sydney Larue Dwyer, or his wife, uh, who World plays Cup for, winning, the, World Cup winning with for the U.S. team, team and plays for the Orlando Pride. Uh, and they are like. This is like the, they're like the modern family of American soccer. They're the Jay-Z and Beyonce of soccer. Yes, and they on, on social media, they're just absolutely lovely. Uh, and they also have uh, a family. They have a new baby boy, right? <laughs> so this is a, a fun thing. This is Jasmine and Aladdin, Dom Dwyer as Jasmine, and uh, Sydney LaRue as, uh, uh, as Aladdin, and their baby Cassius as Abu. Right. <laughs> so, oh. uh, so I just wanted to show, just to give Sense a background. Sense of humor, of, love it. They they do this a lot on social media. They're great. I think the pressure on girls and boys now is this pressure to be exemplary. You know, to be a role model. It's very real that pressure. You know, I mentioned it a couple of times, but it's a real pressure for young players now. They can't be those reckless gazers and Tony Adams and all those you know, 90s, 80s, 90s English players. So, like, um, you know, I, I'm sympathetic to that. I'm glad I don't have those kinds of... <laughs> I don't have to be... Do you have to be a role model? God, no. I mean, have you heard the show? I mean, if anything, <laughs> I let you know right out the, ga the, ga the gate, I'm, I'm not. I'm completely inspired, rushing off to my agent to get another book deal. All right. So, um, well, I hope we can help make that happen, right? Well, so congratulations they, to us, so huh? We, 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 we <laughs> broke oh, the deal. There's so much money to be made in books. <laughs> oh. Wait till you get a podcast. But I did want to <laughs> I did want to focus more on uh, on the next photo because this was this is not really focused on in, in the book necessarily. But uh, Cassius himself is quite the style icon. This is the child himself. Oh. He is quite the fashion icon already. And he, he is balling, baby balling, <laughs> and glam rock. Yeah, the lightning bolt, the stars. Um, I love that. What a great family. The little and Scully. Somebody's bringing back acid wash jeans in the background. That's Dom Dwyer. That's dad. Dad. <laughs> dad. Um, uh, and then this is the last look I wanted oh. to show you. This is just the cutest kid in the world, but he's out, he's out uh, uh, shining his parents. He's got more followers, probably. <laughs> So he's he's well. so great. Oh, they have to have a lot more so they can dress him all up. <laughs> what, what's a cute little kid? Uh, is I he wearing plus fours? This. You know, like, like um, Nickerbock is that famous manager of... Used to wear those Buckley. For, um, yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, like the knee pants just below yeah. the knee. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the gaffer Cassius right there. Yeah. Oh, bless him. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I did want. I, I'm glad we can get we got to show you that a little bit and just to, to show you what's going on. In Brilliant, America, right? In American yeah, soccer. Yeah. And you know, fashion is also now adapting. Like I think uh, Versace put on uh, scarves and jerseys, and uh, Virgil, who did all the stuff with Kanye, he's bringing in some soccer. So the worlds are colliding a bit more. Yeah, and I think obviously uh, English soccer culture is like what 150 years old. Isn't that crazy? I know. So like I think American soccer culture, you know, it'll have time, it'll evolve in all kinds of unexpected directions, and particularly women's soccer culture. Like, you know, wouldn't it be great you get to the point where they're like this bad girls of of women's soccer and like ones who are super high profile glam well they are now. Well, they're they're so, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have your Alex Morgan. We hope so. Yeah. She's very much the, She's the bad had, girl. Those were all in my girl. I was focusing on those in my chapter, but it, it felt token, so I didn't put them okay. in. Okay. Well they'll they'll get their own book and it'll be they so they're honored to know you even wrote their name down. So that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> um, no the well, wasn't the Women's World Cup the most watched sporting event? Yeah, the final, yeah. Hello. I mean, you know. It's here. It's here. <laughs> so, uh, Simon, you are, you're going to be, your book is uh, going to be available next week, right? Am I? Um, actually, right before the World Cup. 
Okay. The June twelfth. June twelfth. Okay, yeah. cool. So, uh, so people can pick it up, and it'll be everywhere. Uh, Amazon bookstores. I'm doing an event at the Strand June fourteenth. Th that's right. You're gonna be at Strand Bookstore on June fourteenth, and on May twenty second, you're gonna be at Kicking and Screening, uh, doing a, a talk there. Uh, yes. So yeah. make sure uh, that thank you. The people from Kicking and Screening help set this up. So thank you uh, to them. And we're uh, gonna be giving away some tickets for that. So stay that's tuned. That's right. That's right. Uh, but Simon, this was this has been a Amazing. This is an absolute honor. Thank you so much for taking Thank the time. Thank you for having me, and I'll see you at Kicking and Screening. Isn't it great that they it's do amazing. that? It's so good. Yeah. If you don't, yeah. If you don't know, Kicking and Screening is a, a, a film festival. We did it last year. Yeah. We, um, we had a talk, which is pretty cool. And uh, just a, a soccer films that you otherwise probably wouldn't either hear about or get to see. Really, really great work. We saw some great from films all over the world. Yeah, it's awesome. Year. Yeah. All right, merci beaucoup. Oh, all right. We'll go a little knuckle. Thank you so much, Simon. Doing Simon everyone. Do go out. Get this book. Not only is it a cool book, but it's also cool just to like leave around. It's like very easy to read. It's you like can flip to any page. A little table. object. Yeah. 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 Right. So, Soccer yeah. style: The Magic and Madness by Simon Doonan. Absolutely amazing. So go get that uh, as soon as it is come out, June twelfth, like you said. All right. Yeah.